Can it be legal to ration fundamental rights like liberty? Ration fundamental rights. Yeah, so that maybe only the first percent have liberty of, or freedom of speech or the right to life? No, I don't think that's the definition of liberty. I don't think you determine who has it and who doesn't have it, no. You can't ration it, no. Okay. It, Never heard of such a thing. What you have just heard is profound. Let me explain why. Liberty is the second most fundamental right, second only to life itself according to their order in the Declaration of Independence. Liberty is one of very few rights specified in the original Constitution, which begins, We the people of the United States, in order to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do establish this Constitution. According to the Supreme Court, these two clauses of the 14th Amendment guarantee the fundamental rights of everyone living in the United States, even unauthorized aliens. Nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. The court quoted Senator Howard, the floor manager of the 14th Amendment of Congress. The Supreme Court agreed with Senator Howard when he said, The last two clauses of the first section of the amendment disable a state from depriving not merely a citizen of the United States, but any person, whoever he may be, of life, liberty, or property without due process of law or from denying to him the equal protection of the laws of the state. This abolishes all class legislation in the states and does away with the injustice of subjecting one caste of persons to a code not applicable to another. And yet numerical limitations ration liberty to one percent of the Mexicans trying to come legally. 100,000 out of 10 million are rationed liberty. Many have hired lawyers to submit their applications only to wait decades for their applications to be processed. It's not just Mexican. There are nearly 20 Sudanese in Des Moines who came legally but are now undocumented because they didn't know how to renew their temporary visas before the deadline or they lost their papers, or they were arrested because they did not know our laws, and once arrested and before their probation is ended, they are ineligible to renew. And you have <coughs> just heard Judge Roy Moore laugh at the idea of rationing liberty and calling it constitutional. Our immigration laws are founded on the rationing of liberty. Judge Roy Morris is the most popular judge among conservative Republicans. He was the chief justice of the Alabama Supreme Court when uh, a federal judge thought he should remove his Ten Commandments display from the courtroom. And they ended up removing <coughs> Judge Roy Moore along with his display uh, amongst uh, legal arguments that were as dubious as, uh, as uh, the legal arguments that justify abortion. He's very popular among Republicans. In other words, he's the very hero of the very people at the heart of the anti-immigrant movement. His expertise in the law is honored by the heart of anti-immigration his legal credentials exceed those of any presidential candidate. Let's listen to him again. Okay. Can it be legal to ration fundamental rights like liberty? Ration fundamental rights. Yeah, so that maybe only the first percent have liberty of, or freedom of speech or the right to life? No, I don't think that's the definition of liberty. I don't think you determine who has it and who doesn't have it, no. You can't ration it, no. It, Never heard of such a thing. So how can numerical limitations be constitutional? 
They can't. There's no way. No court has been asked to rule on the constitutionality of numerical limitations. I believe if courts were asked, they would agree with Judge Roy Moore and I that you can't ration liberty to people living on U.S. soil. But wait, if numerical limitations are ruled unconstitutional, the whole world will come here. Uh, actually, at some point along the immigration of the whole world into the United States, the United States will annex the whole world. But, but frankly, there are a lot of violent, lawless people in the world who prefer living where they can resolve disputes with bullets rather than ideas, where they can own slaves, and where they can get a job as a government torturer. We attract quality immigrants who want to acquire wealth by honest hard work that benefits others rather than by oppressing others. So I asked Judge Moore if numerical limitations can be justified to control population. The courts say that fundamental rights can be restricted if the restriction survives strict scrutiny and if it serves a compelling government interest. Strict scrutiny means it has to be a restriction that is the least restrictive way to achieve a purpose which is a compelling government purpose. Fundamental liberty rights can be uh, restricted if restrictions survive strict scrutiny and serves a compelling government interest. Can reducing population density be a compelling government interest for rationing liberty? If I understand the proper, if I understand your question, I would answer no. It's questionable with our understanding, but I, I don't think you can have a compelling interest to reduce the number of people in an area. No. I don't think there's any doubt Judge Moore understood the question, but I was not allowed enough time with him to explain how I intended to place these questions in the context of immigration. I tried later to write and explain to him, but have been unable to find an address for him that he will respond from. Judge Roy Moore laughs at the idea of calling it constitutional to ration liberty. He utterly rejects the excuse for rationing liberty that we need to reduce our population. And yet, American immigration policy is founded on the rationing of liberty to supposedly help control U.S. population growth. How can our immigration laws be constitutional? They are not. But courts can't rule on issues not brought before them, and no court has been asked to rule on the constitutionality of numerical limitations. It is time we ask them. Well, so, uh so I tried to assemble all these ideas into a, a legal brief, and I'm just waiting for the day someone can use this. This is a web. This is the for the brief. You can you can find it. Uh, it's in English. This is designed so that if you are facing a deportation hearing, or you are charged with helping undocumented immigrants. You can use these legal arguments to challenge the constitutionality of numerical limitations and not only set yourself free, but millions others. Are these legal arguments sound? Well, that has not been tested by mainstream lawyers or courts, so you're going to have to determine the answer the way Protestants say you're supposed to interpret the Bible. You're going to have to read them for yourself and think for yourself about their validity. I've tested these arguments by every means available to me, shown them to several lawyers, and on the basis of those tests they appear to be irrefutable. But I understand that having irrefutable legal arguments in court does not guarantee victory. Another benefit of studying these arguments, if you are an undocumented immigrant, 
is that you will find it very encouraging to learn that you are not the lawbreaker. It is those who support unconstitutional numerical limitations who are violating the U.S. Constitution and undermining America's rule of law. Nothing can make prosecution pleasant, but it is a lot easier to bear when you know you are innocent. I have in mind how many more immigrants I would like to see welcomed into the United States. And I've embedded that number in a question which I've been able to ask three presidential candidates. Um, if you're curious, if I can get your email address, I'll email you the report so that you can learn what their answers are. And I might be able to get that translated. Um, well, keep in mind as you listen to this question that I've asked these three candidates that the heart of the anti-immigrant movement is conservative Republicans who are most concerned with about our national debt and about abortion. So here is the question. Our national debt is scary because Americans' young, healthy, tax-paying workforce has been too depleted by abortion to support entitlement-sucking old sick seniors like me, who allowed 50 million American innocents to cruelly die. Meanwhile, millions of strong young workers wait at our borders to replace those we have slain to take care of us and our debts. But our numerical limitations won't let them. If we are serious about saving America from financial collapse, isn't it time to revisit those numerical limitations, along with finally stopping the slaughter?